Hey guys, it's Practical Psychology, and it is a pleasure for me to introduce Eudaimonia. Now he's gonna be giving you his favorite tips out of the book, The Art of War. There's a ton of history lessons in this, and if you guys enjoy, go ahead and check out his channel. I'll put the link in the description. Anyways, here's Eudaimonia. Greetings, Practical Psychologists, and thank you for lending me your ears. On my channel, Eudaimonia, I'm animating the famous book, The Art of War by Sun Tzu. The book can be used as a guide to lead you through obstacles. Originally written to provide a strategy in war, now it can provide a strategy to modern life. It outlines approaches to conflict and competition, and the advice given can be applied to help in business, goal setting and life in general. I want to share with you how you can apply the lessons from the art of war, so I've picked my five favourites from the latest chapter I've animated. The book is notoriously difficult to interpret and read, so I've added real life historical examples and advice to take away for each, to help you in today's world. Lesson number 3. The rule is not to besiege walled cities if it can possibly be avoided. The preparation of siege engines and other various implements of war will take up 3 whole months, and the building of ramparts over the walls will take 3 months more. At the start of the Boer War in South Africa, the British were not prepared and overconfident. The Boers were well armed and struck first, besieging towns. Despite not being ready, the British defended the town by building fortifications, guns and watchtowers. They then brought in heavy reinforcements and fought back. The Boers had lost their advantage, giving their opponents time to recover and they went on to lose the war. Laying siege to a strongly defended location is hard work, will probably take a long time and takes much resource. Your troops are exposed while theirs are hidden. Lesson number 7. Now the general is the protective wall of the state. If the wall is complete at all points, the state will be strong. If the wall is defective, the state will be weak. Prior to the Second World War, British Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain was not prepared to intervene when Austria was invaded and preferred appeasement and making concessions to avoid conflict. Diplomats and politicians pursued this with skill and nerve, like a game of poker, but the enemy wasn't playing poker. Despite Chamberlain claiming to have bought peace, the Germans continued to invade European countries. With Chamberlain's support dwindling, he resigned and a new leader was chosen. If leaders are weak, then their decisions and orders will be weak. Therefore, it is vital for the state to appoint consistently strong leaders. Lesson number 9. He will win who knows how to handle both superior and inferior forces. In the Battle of Agincourt, Henry V took on his French opponents, despite having only one quarter of the amount of troops they had. He was victorious in part due to the small narrow field where the battle took place, allowing his archers firing arrows over a much longer distance to be protected by his men armed with stakes on the front line. You will not always have the greatest army, yet you can win. It is important to know the right fighting strategy. Lesson number 11. He will win who has prepared himself and waits to take the enemy unprepared. The British campaign in Gallipoli during the First World War was a huge disaster, partly due to how unprepared the Allies were for the difficult and rugged terrain. They also weren't ready for the strength of the Turkish resistance, who used landmines to great effect. An army will spend very little time actually fighting, but when it is not in combat, it should be preparing. Failing to prepare is preparing to fail. If you're prepared but your enemy isn't, then you have a huge advantage. Lesson number 13. If you know the enemy and know yourself, you need not fear the result of a hundred battles. If you know yourself but not the enemy, for every victory gained you will also suffer a defeat. If you know neither the enemy nor yourself, you will succumb in every battle. Fu Qian, the Chinese Emperor, marched with a vast force against rival armies in 383 AD. Despite being warned by advisers not to continue due to having poorly trained soldiers, he said, I have the population of eight provinces at my back. They could dam up the Yangtze River by merely throwing their whips into the stream. What danger have I to fear? His forces were soon decisively beaten in battle and he was forced to make a hasty retreat. Self-belief without self-knowledge is dangerous. Knowing yourself without knowing the opposition is also dangerous. With full knowledge, you can always win. With weak knowledge, you can always fail. Be honest with yourself and know the opponent better than he knows himself. <laughs>